You're listening to the Skeptic's Guide to the Universe, your escape to reality. Right, I mean, these, these, this, these grassroots fights at the state level are, are not going to go away anytime soon. And the, the, the creationists are just getting more and more slick at, at pursuing their agenda. I mean, think about it. You know, originally they were trying to ban evolution from the schools, mm-hmm. and well, you know, that obviously time. that that destroyed a generation of evolution teaching in this country. But um, obviously, that's not going to get through the courts now. So then they said, okay, we we won't ban evolution. Let's just go for equal time. Right. We just want creationism to have equal time in the name of academic fairness. Right. And then that in got the them another in the round si- in science class. In science class, that got them. You know, they got five, ten years out of that ploy until the the Supreme Court struck it down numerous times. And now we're seeing the you know the next Repackage phase. Yeah, the next phase of 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 their agenda. Creation is too old. Yeah, changing the definition of huh. science to a systematic method of continuing investigation. You know, how many people are going to recognize what the implication of that is? At first sight, not a, not that's a, no, it's subtle. They're it's getting very, very subtle. subtle. They're getting yeah. very intelligent design. You know, removing all mention of God or anything overtly religious, but maintaining the core, you know, claims of evolution denial. They're getting very slick and very insidious, very patent. Yeah, that's very that's the intelligent design here. Yeah, it's the yeah. evolution of right. creationism. Yeah. yeah, I love that. You know, <laughs> and they're also very much interested in surrounding themselves with the trappings. Of legitimacy and of science, because yeah, then everybody wants hard, that. It becomes harder for the public to tell the difference between real science and fake science. I mean, let's face it; the whole thing is 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 based on that. And to you know, to be opposed to ID, I think in many people's minds, uh, really to be opposed to creationism is in some way in opposition to God. I think a lot of people think that way. I think it's very emotional for people. It's very oh, hard for them absolutely. to to care enough or, or to want to throw their hat into that ring. They, you know, they'd rather just be quiet well, and I sit mean, on the sidelines. And also, evolution is not is not the easiest of subjects to just you know put your mind around and grasp. It's a much easier concept to think. Okay, creationism. You know, you don't have to think that hard about it and sort of accept it and go on your way. Whereas evolution, you really, you know, you have to, uh, you have to kind of know what's going on. It takes a lot of lot of study to really understand it. It's a, it's a very beautiful and elegant and subtle theory. It really is, but and I mean, but it's not quantum mechanics. I mean, it's, right. I mean you can get a good overview of biology of evolution and biology and and anybody can grasp it if they just put a little bit of effort into it you know if they have any interest and just do a little bit of reading I if mean they're tr- if they're educated if it's you know included in their science well program, right, right. And this, is, and this is really the crux in, of in, that. A cu- in a country where you know uh, all polls indicate where 90 percent of us uh, have belief have faith are religious in some way it's not. It's not an easy sell. Yeah, but but yeah, uh, less than fifty percent believe in evolution. <laughs> right. Which, which less is, than fifty. Which is disgusting. But I mean, look at all the major religion religions that support evolution. Um, you know, Catholicism. You know, the, the Pope. The Pope totally supports uh, evolution. I mean, it, you know. Right. He, I mean, because it's because it is undeniable. It, it does not have to be anti-religion. It, it does not. Can and should be separate. There's right. plenty of scientists that uh, that believe, and it's it's not a it's not a mutually exclusive thing. And but they want to portray it as such. You know, this points to the insidiousness again of um, of intelligent design, where it's not. It doesn't. You know, on the surface, it doesn't quite seem as blatantly ridiculous. But it, but once you delve into it, you realize that it's just as crazy as horoscopes and the flat Earth society. I mean, all of biology, all of biology, you know, is relies on evolution. Biology makes no sense without without evolution. It's it, you know, it's not just a theory in in quotes, which. I hate yeah, that example of, of people say, "Well, it's just a theory." You know, it's the, they, no one's proven it 100 percent. Well, you can't prove it 100 percent, and gravity is a theory as well. So that, that that that's a tact that they take. Now, of course, all of this brings up the broader issue of, uh, as Bob brought up, the, the s- support for science, for science education, for scientific research in um, in America, in the in the broader 
society and culture and this is something which is a, which is a serious issue for example after Sputnik as the conventional wisdom goes the United States frightened by uh, the basically the space race with the Soviet Union started pumping a tremendous amount of effort and and more importantly money into science and math education in, in this country that led to a dramatic increase in the number of scientists that were coming out of this country in the um, into the amount of scientific research and in fact some people credit that ultimately was leading to the tech bubble of the 90s and the internet and all the things that we take for granted now basically coming sure. out of that era of extreme support for for science education and scientific research all well, thanks to Sputnik all I thanks, mean, all thanks to our, our red paranoia that's Does right. that mean we're about to enter a generation lull of scientists? Is well, that's the thing. If, if if we are currently experiencing a lull in the support for science, we won't feel it for 10 or 20 or 30 years. Uh, and our, uh, well, meanwhile, our competitors like China are tremendously increasing their support for science. It may be in 20 or 30 years, you know, they're the, the economic leaders of the technological leaders of the world, and we're not. I'd imagine that. <laughs> and that, that's not something you could fix overnight. You know, again, we're talking about things that take a generation to fix. Right. Yeah, I mean, it is generally believed that China is in the ascendancy as far as uh, you know the balance of world power goes, and this is certainly one of the ways that the leaders of China are trying to, like they are in so many different ways, compel their country. Uh, into the 21st century and beyond. And uh, it seems a highly intelligent way of, of going about it, frankly. You know, it's perhaps not PC to talk about, but it, you have to consider that they still are uh, live in a communist regime and the uh, state-enforced religion is no religion. And, uh, you know, that, um, that's going to have a tremendous impact on, on their... Um, Science on their right. science education and um, and and the course they take, just like our religiosity here in the U.S. is having a tremendous impact on what's happening here. So, what are you saying? That you're not going to see much of uh, intelligent design in China? <laughs> <laughs> right. I believe that that would be illegal. The de intelligent design in China. Right. One of the one of the granted um, few perks of a communist regime. There aren't many. <laughs> uh, well, of course, <laughs> you know, no one is suggesting that we outlaw religion. Of course you know, not. We just need we just need to keep science free from religion, and and religion sh the practice of religion should be free from anything outside of it trying to interfere. Well, like Gould said, you know, they're they're non-overlapping magisteria, you know, separate domains that that should not that should not cross. They're they're completely separate. There, you know, there, there is like no the judge, ground. Like the judge said on The Simpsons, religion shall stay 500 feet from science. <laughs> 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 if only it were so easy. That's true. 500 feet, how about five miles? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's just not going to happen. No. <laughs> no. It's know. unfortunate. It's a constant battle. We just have to be diligent. We have to educate. We have to make people aware. The Skeptic's Guide to the Universe is produced by the New England Skeptical Society in association with the James Randi Educational Foundation and Skeptic.org. For more information on this and other episodes, please visit our website at www.theskepticsguide.org. For questions, suggestions, and other feedback, please use the Contact Us form on the website or send an email to info at theskepticsguide.org. If you enjoyed this episode, then please help us spread the word by voting for us on Dig or leaving us a review on iTunes. You can find links to these sites and others through our homepage. Theorem is produced by Kineto and is used with permission. 